Hello friends, I'm Suki the Bronite Stitcher. Today is Friday, October 6, 2023. And this is floss tube number 36 because I actually looked that one up today. And um, let's just dive right in, shall we? Um, yeah. First, I'm going to show you a Whipco finish. It's not a finish, but like I worked on this for Whipco from May. <laughs> so May is finished. This is um, a Janlin kit. It's called Victorian Christmas Bell Pull. And, oh, I should tell you what I did, huh? I had this top section and the hollies um, finished already, including backstitch. And so my plan had been to work on that section. Not the lower holly border, but the, the middle seam. And, ta-da, I did it. So, yeah, <laughs> I will pop up here a picture of when I finished the stitching, but before I had done the back stitching, because the comparison, the comparison is fun. There ended up being eight colors of back stitch in this. So in my last, pretty certain, yeah, in my last video, I read some of the instructions for the back stitching. If you were here for that, you might remember. Um, as, as it turns out, they didn't tell me about the, the pants, the brown parts of the pants. So I did add that. I followed what they had been doing, which was basically picking the darkest of the reds to stitch around the reds and the darkest of the greens to stitch around the greens. Now the pants has both green and brown and it gave me instructions for the green parts of the pants but not the brown, but it's clearly supposed to be backstitched. Anyway, so I just picked the darkest brown and put that in there, but that did mean that there were eight colors of backstitch here. Um, in this just in this little section but it wasn't it wasn't too bad um one of the colors was their inner eye which is like a half stitch like it's a vertical but half stitch um or i guess a quarter stitch yeah a quarter stitch and it's so you do that four times and that's all of that one color but it was fun so I was happy to get that done. So this um, won't come out again probably until next year, maybe. We'll see. Um, it won't come out until the future. I'm not entirely sure what all I'm doing with all my pieces yet, but um, I don't have to know everything in order to kind of know what I'm doing. I'm having my structure in place, but giving me some flexibility still in what I work with. So, so that was my whip go uh, goal finish. Next, I'm gonna show you my bookshelf. This is Treasure Hunt Bookshelf, super size and max color version. It's artwork by Amy Stewart and charted by Heaven and Earth Design. I am on this third shelf. The first two are already finished and this one will be, I think of it as it's next year, although it will start in November and, but finish next year. So big things here. This is stitched on a 28 count, um, easy count fabric. And it's two strands of floss in a tent stitch. 
And as you can see, I'm on this section still. This is pretty much done. That's so fun. Um, these curtains, I think, are are done, except not all of this like striping is is complete. Uh, let's see. So what I've been doing is I start in the upper left of this section and I stitch it to the upper right, the 10 by 10 blocks. I'm, I'm just picking a color. Hold on, I'll get there. So I, I'm stitching, filling in a 10 by 10 block and then I'm stitching down the right side. And then I come back to the left and I go down the left side and across the bottom. So it, it basically every every go around fills in the outermost 10 by 10 block. What I'm doing is just picking a color from within like that first empty spot and then I stitch it out wherever it goes. Um, I'm even filling in um, stitches in through here. So you'll see there's been like more colors here and I think in through here. And then there's like a lot of ninja stitches that I try to just, it helps me. It's the colors already on my needle. So if I'm able to stitch it in easily, like I can end and start my threads, I will do that. So that's, that's very helpful. But you can see, I'm pretty certain this is a lamp here and a female here that you can start seeing the head um this is a a chair back and you can see the other chair back here uh yesterday i was working down in these greens so it was pretty much just in this section because the greens went all the way down into here and some over in here Yeah, it's looking fantastic. And it's so hard to believe how quickly stitching in the springs is coming up. Um, so November 7th is a Tuesday and that was my gold date for getting this finished because I leave on the 8th, no, 9th. Yes, I leave on, on Thursday the 9th. Um, I may end up needing to take some of Wednesday on this, which will be fine. It's a little hard to know exactly what the stitch count is that I need, so calculating out an exact amount is hard because I do have some stitches underneath and stuff, and so it's very close, but it's not an exact science. Anyway, so I'm stitching 600 stitches a day, and um, I will remain at 600 stitches a day while I'm not traveling until this is finished. Um, because I have three trips happening between now and stitching in the springs, which is crazy because stitching in the springs is only a month away. <laughs> it's the second weekend in November, so that's, it's just crazy. Um, if you are going to Stitching in the Springs, um, I'm so excited to meet you. Even if I don't know or remember that you're going to be there. There's so many of you. Um, I feel like so many of you are planning on coming that it's, whew, there's a lot. But this bookshelf will be coming with me and it will be on the Bragg table with all three shelves opened. So that'll be, it's, as fantastic as it is in pictures and videos, it's really something different to see it in person. I, yeah, so I wish I could like jump through all of y'all's screens and just show it to you. Like, like here, take a look at this in person. Okay, now I'm gonna bring it back now. <laughs> That's how I feel. Next, I, what is this one? Oh, my um, stamped kit. And apparently once again, I have left my needle attached to the back. I, I remember why. I just took this to a um, 
surge a consultation for another dental procedure for my daughter. This time will probably be this hopefully will be the last, but it might not be. We'll see. Um her upper uh, 12 year molars don't want to drop down. And she only has one upper wisdom tooth. Um, her lowers have all been taken care of uh, last year. They had to upright her lower 12 year old molars and they took out her wisdom teeth and everything. But now it's the top ones, they won't drop down. There's one wisdom tooth. So they're going to go in and take out that wisdom tooth and um, kind of like expose the 12 year old molars. Like they're going to, I don't know, cut back the gum or something, whatever it is that they do. They're going to expose those molars and kind of like hope that they can kind of give it a little bit of a, a nudge to see if they can get it to drop. Um, and then they'll keep an eye on it. And if it doesn't seem like it's doing anything, they might try to bring them down a different way. Last option is to just remove them completely. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> but anyway, we had the consultation for that just a couple days ago. And that's where this, I, I was finishing it, but I didn't have time to cut it off before I needed to put it away. So, oh, I need to actually show you this piece. Um, yeah. Cover is here. This is from Oraloa. It is Phoenix and gorgeous. And here is, here's the front. Oh, let me move my needle minder to the corner. There's what it looks like currently. And here's the back. And you can see. So I was on color three last time. Yes, two videos ago I was on color three, which was one of these purples. Like there's a lot of purples in here. And so the shading is really kind of subtle sometimes and it's fun anyway I was working on one of these purples and I finished it up color four was this green color which is really hard to see on the front because um it's like right next to the green stamping but you might be able to see like the stitching here and there's more down here and then color five is a another purple this purple, which is not all of this. There's actually two purple colors up here, two different colors. Yep. Anyway, that's the one I'm on currently is color number five, which there's a fair, a fair amount in here. So I don't think I'll finish that before the next um, video, but we'll see. There's no particular goal set on this one. Um, no real aim. I'm just picking the next color and, and stitching that all the way out. And that's nice. And I did find my other pair of scissors with the sheath. And so this can live in this bag and I will always have scissors with the two projects I tend to travel with. They each have their own set now. Okay, this next piece is my secret project. Uh, it's only a secret from the recipient, so that's why you all know about it. I am not gonna show you the cover photo because you'll mostly be able to see the shape of it. Look at her. So this is a 36 count even weave. I can never make her my cover, my thumbnail on YouTube because um, the recipient will see the thumbnail. <laughs> so I can't ever use her, but doesn't she look so good? I worked a lot on the black. I almost finished it. There's just some down in here. 116 stitches left of black. That's it. And I was going to finish it the last time I was working on her, except I discovered I didn't have my black nor my scissors, so that was special. But I did have 3799 with me, 
And so I came up here and was stitching in along here. In there. Oh, she looks so good. I love seeing all that structure in, having the black all in place. It looks so good. This is a custom chart from um, Luthien Art Shop. And uh, yeah, she has lots of fantastic charts. I actually just saw that she's about to release a grumpy cat Christmas themed. Pretty certain it was the Christmas theme, not Halloween theme. Anyway, <laughs> it was very cute. Ah, so good. I can't wait to just get so many more colors in. And ah, I put in um, three, four thousand. Oh, I didn't tell you this on Treasure Hunt Bookshelf because my thing is still sitting here. Okay, doesn't matter. I put in 4,460 stitches into Fira, and we're now over halfway, 51.47%. Yeah, so good. Treasure Hunt Bookshelf, I put in 6,647 stitches. It's at 74.35%. So we are closing in on 75%. It will definitely be at 75% next time I film. That section won't be finished yet, but we'll, we'll be at 75%. Next up is Woodland Enchantress. This is a Dimensions Kit gold collection. The artwork is Ruth Sanderson. There is one for all the seasons and I would love to do all of them. It's on a 16 count gray Ada. It's just what came in the kit. I didn't, I didn't swap it out. I did all the background first and I've been working on her skirt. Um, I finished all the, the green part and now I'm doing, if you see this blue border and then like this gold part here, I am working on that and that. So I'm finishing up her overskirt is what I'm working on now. When I finish that, I will move on to the underskirt. So I should be in on the underskirt by the next video, but we'll see because th there's a long way down to the end of this skirt. And I'm only stitching this in more or less 30 um, minute chunks. So here it goes. Doesn't that look so good? So this, this will come down if you see the fold right there. We need to connect this down to here. Something like that. Yeah. That's what we're gonna do. So I, I put in the navy on this side and there, there'll be some of the gold going on here. And the gold, it's it's like this stuff. It's, um, they're half stitches. So those ones will go fast. And then I put in blues, the navy blue. That goes fast too, because it's just one color. It's very easy. Um, the leaves are, just, I think they're two colors. I can't remember, but you can see what they look like here. They will all have backstitching. There's a lot of backstitching to be done at the end, but not yet. She looks so good. So, so good. Okay, the last project I worked on is Frodo and Galadriel. No, I I had to have worked on a different one. Did I? 
I totally did. I worked on Queen of the Night, but I didn't like prep her stats or anything. So let me pull her up real quick. Yeah, I didn't I didn't do any of her stats. It looks like I stitched a little over a thousand on here. It's at 30.55% now. It's um, This is Queen of the Night, artwork by Josephine Wall and charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, it's in a Q-snap, so I can't... I had some hanging threads over here, and I stitched those in, and now I'm working on this page somewhere here. I don't know. Um, it's, it's loosened a bit. So that's what's going on here. Anyway, so I came over here and was working in this page. So here-ish is the page boundary. And I, that's where I will be working on is here. So yeah, I think I did. Yeah close to 1100 stitches it looks like and 30.55% now all right now the last one I have to show you is Frodo and Galadriel also known as the gift um, artwork by Matt Stewart and charted by heaven and earth designs a couple people have told me they have the story keep of this um, which is here I believe and yeah this is just the normal normal all the things and you have heard me plenty of times lament where's my note card found it <laughs> uh you've heard me lament about how long ago i started this piece it was only like it's almost seven years old, but it was only like 6% finished. Okay, well, it's changed. Look at this. I had all of these hanging threads across the top and then in this diagonal going down. So I finished all of those hanging threads. I stitched them all in and I actually have done um, a couple. I started down here. I am so, so pleased with how this is going. Let's see here. I can't see. There we go. Look how amazing that looks. I've put in 3,500 stitches in. 36? 3,600 stitches since my last video. 3,100 of those were in the last three days. That's insane. It's incredible. Um, and I did that while still stitching on my bookshelf and Woodland Enchantress. Ah, oh, it is so good. My plan is to finish stitching out all the parked threads and then I'm kind of of two different minds, so I haven't decided this yet. There's a part of me that wants to see the whole width of this, and so I'm kind of wanting to pick a color from the 10 by 10, well, the top 10 column, what is, no, columns, rows. So following the 10 by 10 in the row, um, and but then just stitch them out you know, as I do the cross country thing, um, just to see the whole width of it. There's a part of me that wants to do that. Um, or I could not, and then just work on page two. Page one is finished. Page two would be next. And then maybe doing diagonals. There's nothing to stop me from going across the width and then doing the diagonal pages. I just haven't decided yet. I don't even have to decide now, but this is at 7.77%, guys. It's 
its birthday is in the middle of November. So it has reached 7% before its seventh birthday. <sighs> Progress, guys. I love it. I am so happy to get like regular progress on my Lord of the Rings wall um, or my, my wall of Middle Earth really since there's a good Hobbit representation in it too. The Shire. That brings me to plans. This might get a little wordy so I'm gonna try not to. I'm, I'm gonna try to make it make it as understandable as possible. So, I, I had this thought and I let it bounce around in my brain and then I let it just keep forming until I was happy uh, to start conceptualizing it a little more solidly which led to some fancy maths and um, playing around with some dates lots of dates lots of maths And now I'm testing it out. Is this feasible or not? Um, I'm still not entirely sure that it's feasible, but I think, I think it will be. So, so you know that I have, I have a lot of whips, but most of them are paused. And so I just have um, a much smaller active project um, pile, right? Um, so I have Treasure Hunt Bookshelf, Queen of the Night, Sabrina, Frodo and Galadriel, Fira, Woodland Enchantress, The Summer Garden, Phoenix. So I have eight plus my fostered project from Alara I need to finish up. And then Whip Go. Okay. So that's 11 in total, okay? <sighs> so my crazy idea was um can it had to do with my full coverages, okay? I'm getting so close to finishing this third shelf on bookshelf, right? And next year I'm finishing the whole thing, like bonkers. Like that is crazy to me that I'm finishing the super size next year. Insane, but I, I'm, I'm doing it. Um, but I needed a plan for the rest of my full coverage. like. I know how, like just by having consistent um, stitching on a project is going to get it to where I want it to be, right? I've seen that over and over again with my bookshelf, with Woodland Enchantress, just getting that one 30 minutes a day, just seeing consistent stitching on something is going to see it finished in a time that feels good to me. So since I've been really liking my limited number of lips, I decided to go further now, right? <sighs> this is the part I'm not sure. I'm hoping that this makes sense. So my bookshelf finishes, um, my aim is October 31st, but if I have to take an extra week, I will. Um, because really I just want it done by stitching in the springs 2024. Um, but anyway, we're just going to stick with October 31st. And then 
I thought, what if I aim to finish a full coverage project every six months, starting from that point? And then I had to let that sit. Like, I really like this idea. Is it actually feasible? The answer, I believe, is yes. I think it's doable. Um, but it, it doesn't mean, like, I can't just wait until I finish a project to then put in another project, right? Um, I need to start now. To, I need to, I need to put those things into place so that I can finish a full coverage every six months, starting with my bookshelf. Um, so how I've decided to do it is the project that is next is Queen of the Night. By the time my bookshelf finishes, I want Queen of the Night to be at 50%, okay? So that gives me a year to get Queen of the Night from 30 to 50%. Um, and then the project after that, six months later, will be Frodo and Galadriel. So in, what is that, April? Yeah, end of April is when I'll need Frodo and Galadriel to be at 50% because that's when I want Queen of the Night to be at finished. So do you see how this starts layering is when I, when I finish a full coverage, I want the next one to be at 50% every time. But I can always have three full coverages going at a time like I do right now so that I'm spreading out those stitch counts through a much longer time. I'm not, and it, and it allows me to have variety in my stitching and not feel so like tied to a project. Not that I mind with bookshelf, but I am looking forward to bookshelf being done and to play more with my stitching. And I want to start doing that now, which I think is what, where I, I'm doing right now. <laughs> I'm having fun with this. Um, I know that something like this is not fun for most of you. It starts making you feel like it's too much structure for you guys. But I am somebody who does very well with structure. I do very well with rhythm. Um, and so this, this works so well for me. I, yeah, it works so well. And I'll show you where I have the flexibility built in a little bit. Um, along with this structure. So when I finish bookshelf, um, Queen of the Night will be at 50% and Frodo will be somewhere less than 50%. I don't know where it will be. Um, it'll be probably the upper 20%, maybe 27, 28, possibly even 30. Anyway, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't matter. But when I finish bookshelf, I will bring in another full coverage piece and I'm gonna alternate between a lower stitch count and a higher stitch count. So Queen of the Night is in the 100,000s. Frodo is in the 300,000s. So the next one I bring in will be one of my smaller ones. Maybe, I'm kind of thinking No Smoking by Randall Spangler. Um, Cause I really wanna work on that one. I really wanna get that one done. I, I want to get that one out now, honestly, but um, I can't, I'm not allowing myself to do that. So it doesn't fit in my structure. So that's my plan for my full coverage. I did math to figure out, um, my stitch count. Now I kind of have my, okay, this is how structured I, I made it. I, I broke this down into two week chunks. So ideally it's going to tie in with my floss tubes. Um, even though I know sometimes my floss tubes have to happen on different days other than the day I plan to film. Um, roughly speaking, I'm, I'm, I'm aiming for this two week period. So I broke all of these numbers down to a two week period. So Treasure Hunt Bookshelf is, is pretty much set. Um, what I'm thinking though, is I do know how many stitches 
I need in a two week period for my bookshelf. So once this shelf is finished, and I'm just working on the third shelf, I can massage the numbers within a two week period rather than within the whole year. So I knew this was gonna be so wordy and I hope that this is making sense. Okay, so I broke out the remaining percentage on my bookshelf from now, well, when I did the math, from then until October 31st, 2024, okay? And then I calculated what that each, um, it's basically 0.92% every two weeks is what I need to do on bookshelf in order to be done by that goal. That is 6,645 stitches, okay? And so what that means is if in a two week period, I'm just gonna be home every day, I can stitch a normal like 500 stitches every day and be fine. But if I'm going to be gone, say for four days out of those, that two week period, now I need to take the 66, 45 stitches and put them into um, 10 days instead of 14 days, okay? So that means that I'm not at any point gonna start stressing about oh, my stitch count needs to go so high for so long. How is this gonna work? Because I'm, I'm, my aim now is a two week chunk rather than a year long chunk. So I like that, I like that. So I did the same thing with Queen of the Night. I looked to see where I, what 50% was, broke that out by percentages, I need 0.7% every two weeks. That's only 1,077 stitches every two weeks. Like that's nothing. That's, that's, that's gonna be easy to hit um, for me, okay? Um, so I did that and then I found the math for Frodo and Galadriel for 50% from when Queen of the Night would be finished. And that is, this one was the hardest to, to know, could I, could I get this one done, okay? It's 1.03% every two weeks, which is 3,133 stitches. And, um, that felt like a lot, even though I know that I do more than that on my bookshelf, but that's like half the amount. Well, it's a little under half the amount as what I need on my bookshelf. So, well, I'm testing this out, but that's why I was aiming for 7.77% um, the last couple weeks is, was that possible? to to hit that to hit that and I did most of that in three days um I think I stitched on it four times in total so but most of that was it was in three days so that's incredible so my future plans that's how it's shaping up was with those. So then I started turning to these other projects of mine and seeing like, how can I break these up to give myself like goals, smart goals, right? Like specific and measurable and, and time bound, all of those, whatever smart stands for. Um, what does the A and R stand for? I don't know. Um, smart goals. So how can I break up all of these other projects and when do I want to see these projects done to give myself this timing? And do I think this, this is possible? Like, let's not, let's not overdo it, right? So Sabrina, Sabrina I broke out 
Um, let me let me pull her out and I will I'll show you how I broke this up. So I already have like her her top and stuff done, right? And I'm working on the gloves and the chair and these flowers. So that's the gloves are done. I just need to finish this chair and the flowers here. So that was the most obvious first um, section. Then the next one is the bodice and then these flowers. It's a small section, it seems to make sense. And then I broke the skirt up. I have the front skirt and the back skirt because there is kind of like this line here. And so this is the front skirt and this is the back skirt. Obviously this is the biggest section and that's okay. I can make the timeline bigger for that one and smaller for ones like this one. Um, so my next video, by my next video, I want this part to be finished, okay? So, um, so yes, my bookshelf will get its stitches. Uh, Queen of the Night will get at least the thousand stitches. Um, and Frodo, we're gonna get those 3,000 stitches in. But Sabrina, the, the goal for the next two weeks is to get that part done. I am going to Stitch West next weekend. I'm excited to meet so many of you there. Um, Sabrina will be one of the ones with me. I believe Queen of the Night will also be with me. I am traveling by plane and so I'm kind of limited on which projects I can bring. But, yeah. Okay. What... What next? Um, Fira, Fira is pretty easy. I'm not at all concerned. Um, I, I know that I want it done by the end of November. And so I just broke out that percentage. My aim for this video is 50%. The aim for the next one is 62.5%. Um, it, so that's, um, ba -ba 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 -ba, like 3,500 stitches, um, which it's very easy to stitch on Fira. Like I, it's, I'm not even concerned about that one at all. Woodland Enchantress. So she's still just going to get my 30 minutes a day, but I think I can get this done by the end of the year. Okay, I, I broke out the sections and gave them some timelines. I worked my way backwards to figure this out, actually. So we've got the overskirt, okay? Then, then the underskirt. And then like the bodice and the sleeves. And then the staff. And then the hair and all the skin. So that's her face and her hands. Um, I'm not doing her hands with the sleeves only because they're gonna be the same colors that are in the skin, the face. And so I'm, I'm doing it there. And the hair is also like down here too. And then that will be all the stitching and then I have to do back stitching and the couching and the beading. So I started backwards at this point and I said beading will take me like a day. Couching that'll take me like a day. Back stitch that could take me a good couple weeks at least. <laughs> right? So I just worked my way backwards. So by my next video, I want the overskirt done and I hope to be started in on the underskirt. Um, so that the two weeks after that point, the underskirt can be finished. So the beginning of November. Is that making sense? I hope it does. Now, um, the summer garden is one I haven't broken out yet because um, that's this one because I don't plan on pulling this out until next year. So I have not um, 
actually looked at this, but I'm, I'm thinking, oh, let me take it out from the glare. This is what I'm thinking, but I knew I had time, so I didn't, I didn't actually do it yet. All of this side is finished. So there's like, no, this side is finished, the, the left side. So there's a tree, and then we've got Cosmos Salvia, Gylandia, I don't know, and a rose. So I'm thinking each of those, that's one, two, three, four, five, will be a two-week period. Um, that's very doable in a two-week period. Um, but with Fira right now, and um, like I would like to... I'd like to get Fira done and uh, and if I can manage Woodland Enchantress by the end of the year, then then this will come back out. Though this is a, a project, I guess I didn't count this one. I should have, which means I have nine plus three, which is 12 projects. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh no, I did count it. So eight plus 11, my math was correct. Okay. But that's, that's next year. That's, I don't think that this will come out before then. Let's see. My Fawcett project, um, that one I'll be working on over the next two weeks. It just needs a little bit of um, back stitching just a tiny bit and then couching so those of you who have been waiting on me to tackle couching that's going to be coming um, over the next two weeks okay um, that's got to be done because it's got to go back to oh wait I have like a whole month So I don't think it's going to be these next two weeks because I've got a lot of travel. So not this next two weeks, but the two after that. So scrap that. Um, it's not on my plans for the next two weeks. Um, my whip go pieces for, where are they? Uh, June, because I'm still working on this. My idea is that I can do two every two weeks and eventually that'll be like caught up or done or something, right? I didn't actually do the math on this. Where's my calendar? I'm sorry if you can hear mowing. My window is open and apparently the next door neighbors are mowing again. Um, so June, and then July and August, September, October, November. Okay, so if I do two every two mm, weeks, that means at the end of the year, I don't have December done. So I may have to rethink this a little bit, but uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. But what they are is... Um, this is Twisted Band Sampler. This is by Northern Expression Needleworks. I have the butterfly band done. So the next one is a specialty stitch band. I would like to see a band done as a whip go goal. However, um, I'm not going to hold myself to that. It's on a um, 32 count black bow fast linen. And the other whip go piece I will be working on is this was a stitch along from Owls, Owl Forest Embroidery last year. It's house plants. I only ever got the first one done and I stitched it in DMC and that's going to stay DMC. However, I now have the thread pack so I will switch over to their, um, What is this called? Their hand dyes. This is a 40 count water lily linen. It's um, one strand tent stitch. So they're very, very tiny. 
I'd like to see one plant done as a whip go, but yet again, not gonna hold myself to it with all my other crazy plans. So, to just round out this extremely long explanation, oh wait, no, I might bring these Mill Hill kits out. Um, one is a harvest, autumn harvest collection, red cap mushrooms. And then the other is haunted zone. Um, but we're not, we're not pulling out any like Halloween or fall decorations this year because they are in a part of the garage that I'm still struggling a bit with fleas. So I'm not, I, I can't do everything. I'm doing a lot and it, a lot is better, but I can't do everything. So I kind of want to get these done. They're small, so I think that's completely doable during my travels and at like during Stitch West maybe. So I, these will be coming with me to be worked on. Now, to round out my plans. I won't go through all of that in the future because that's that was a lot. What I did was I took all of those numbers and decided how many days I wanted to work on a project. So Queen of the Night is around a thousand. I figure if I get 500 done a day on it, that's just gonna take me two days, right? Um, Frodo and Galadriel, allowing for the same like 500, that's gonna take me about six days to um, get its 3,000 done. Sabrina, I'll give two days. Um, and each whip go piece will get two days each, okay? So whatever I get done in those two days for whip go, I'm just gonna call it good and move on. I because that's, yeah, I just, I wanna be able to touch them, but I have other things to touch too. So um, that's what we're gonna do. I'll do as much as possible in those days, but yeah. Um, and then Fira has certain days that it already gets, like Sunday, Monday, and Tuesdays. Um, I already stitch on those because I tend, I go places and take Fira with me. Um, I also tend to stitch on Fiero when I'm on an airplane because I can just use one color. It's very compact. Um, so Fiero gets plenty of, of time uh, without me trying to put it in with these other, other things. And so that's like my structure. My flexibility is that now I can choose which days, which six days are going to best work for Frodo, right? which two days can now I put queen and then I can build from there. So, um, depending on the day, I'm going to stitch three or four pieces. Um, yeah, which is nice. I like that three or four pieces in a day. Um, yeah. It's good. It is good. So my travel over the next two weeks, I'm going to Stitch West and then um, I come home from, I fly back on Monday the 16th and then on Thursday of that same week, I am driving up to New Jersey for a K-pop concert with my daughter. And then I'm driving back down that Friday so I'm not really sure that's the day I needed to film again. However, I'm gonna be driving back and it's 24 hours of cross stitch weekend. So do I film on Wednesday, which is gonna be two days early, or do I film on the following Monday, which would be three days later, but would include all of 24 hours of cross stitch stuff? That's my current question. Which which of those do I do? I don't know. 
but I think that is everything for me to spew forth at you. Life is going so good for me right now. Um, I talked about the thing with my sleep I was trying last time. That's been continuously improving. I cannot believe the amount of like energy and mental clarity that I have now just from that. Uh, it's definitely not my nutrition. That's not so good because pumpkin everything, like pumpkin rolls, yes please. Kaylin got pumpkin spice bagels. We just had those this morning. Yes, please. Um, we saw pumpkin spice brioche bread in the store. We got that too. Um, that one's not as great, but we have discovered toasted with butter is really delicious. Um, and we also think that I made like a cream with like vanilla extract. I feel like there was something that sweetened it in there, but I can't remember now. But we think that poured over, it's basically cream like people in the UK do, right? Um, we had it on strawberries, it was so good. And, and I think that it would be really good with this, the brioche bread. Oh, uh, what was I saying about the sleep? Oh, it's gone so well. I am taking care of my pets. I've made phone calls, like phone calls I've been putting off forever, like making vet appointments for all of my pets. Those are now made. Um, and just other things, cutting down my budget because I am, um, planning on a big change next year and like keeping things tidied, working on like decluttering, like I'm doing things and and it's so good guys it's so good i didn't like i thought that it was possible to get to this point i hoped i would get to this point i kept working at it and trying things um figuring this out i feel like i'm getting it now it's great and i'm learning how um I'm just learning how a lot of things are working for me and it's it's so good and I love that I'm doing these additional things in my house I'm practicing piano because now Corral has started um and I and I accompany for them so I've been practicing um I I have two piano students that I teach I'm homeschooling like I'm doing these things and still stitching a lot it's so good. And reading. Ah, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Okay. Um, that's all. I'm done. I love you all. And I will talk to you around in all the places. If you want to see my daily progress, follow me on Instagram because I post every day there multiple times a day. Um, the brown eyed stitcher. It's in the description box. My love to you. Bye.